In this video, you're going to learn all about five tips for leading your worship team. Coming up. Hey everyone, Spencer here from leadingworshipwell.com, your daily dose of practical worship leading tips. If you want to find those tips, you know where to go. Head over to Instagram or Facebook at Leading Worship Well, where I'm posting new worship leading tips, actually just like the ones I'm about to share right now, every single day. But you're here on YouTube, so go ahead, hit the subscribe button down below, and let's get into it, because today we're talking all about leading your worship team. And I'm going to be sharing with you these five tips for leading your worship team. And this is coming off of a video that I put out last week, which you can check out right here, which was just some general tips for just leading worship. But the truth is that oftentimes you'll start out leading worship. You'll be the ones leading your church on Sunday, and then one day you'll wake up, and all of a sudden you'll realize that you have inherited a worship team, and you are no longer just in charge of leading your church in worship, but now you've got this team that you've been put in charge of too. And that's kind of my story. I started leading worship when I was 13 years old. I joined the worship team playing guitar, learned a lot for three years, and then when I was 16, the worship team leader stepped down from his position and the people in the church came up to me and they said, hey, you seem like you know what you're doing. Why don't you be in charge of the worship team? So here I was at 16 years old in charge of of a worship team at my church and that's not an uncommon story and now 10 years later I feel like I've made a lot of mistakes but I've also learned a lot from those mistakes so I want to share with you five tips for leading your worship team and leading your worship team well so let's get into it the first tip is this this is the first tip and really I think the most important if you can build your leadership on this one simple thing it will take you very far in your worship team leadership and that is that you must do what you say when you say you're going to do it every time you say you're going to do it I'll say that again do what you say when you say you're going to do it every single time you say you're going to do it here's what I mean when you say that you're going to do something, do it. <laughs> because that builds trust with your team. And this, there are a lot of small examples of this. There are a lot of large examples of this. So I just want to share sort of a practical way that I see this impacting someone's ministry. And the number one way, well, not number one, but the first thing that pops in my mind is starting your rehearsals on time because here's what happens all right remember we want to do what we say when we say we're going to do it so when it comes to worship team rehearsals a normal story would go something like this you tell your team okay we're going to start rehearsals at 6 p.m for our midweek rehearsals on a thursday night or whenever you have it so you start at 6 p.m and the first few weeks people show up at 6 p.m. and it's great and you're like my team's awesome they show up on time and then a couple weeks down the road it's 6 p.m. and Johnny's still not there and he sends you a text hey I'm gonna be a couple minutes late so in that moment you have a decision to make and a lot of people will wait for Johnny to show up and now it's 605 and he shows up and you're like okay it's time to get started fast forward a couple more weeks 615 Johnny's still not there and you wait for him and now what happens is you instead of starting at 6 when you said you were going to start you're now starting at 615 like every single week and it doesn't happen in an instant it happens over a long period of time of those small decisions of deciding to wait for somebody and ultimately not doing what you said you were going to do when you said you were going to do it which is starting rehearsal at 6 p.m. and so what happens is you lose trust with the people who do show up on time and Actually, you lose trust with Johnny or whoever shows up late as well because what happens is those people who showed up on time at 6 p.m., they start to realize, hey, you aren't doing what you said you were going to do. So I don't need to show up until 6.15 either because 
they're not actually starting when they said they were going to start. And so now instead of just one person not showing up to your rehearsal on time, your entire team understands that you're not going to actually start at six. So they don't need to get there until 15 minutes later. And then you send a DM to me on Instagram like, what do I do? My entire team doesn't show up until 15 minutes after we said we were going to start. And I tell you, have you done what you said you were going to do every single time you said you were going to do it? So that's just a small example of how this builds over time. But if you would have stuck to starting at 6 p.m., when you said you were going to start every single time, every single rehearsal, people would have got the picture. Okay, we're actually going to start at 6 p.m. And instead of people showing up 15 minutes later because they don't trust you, they will trust the people who actually showed up on time will trust, okay, I can show up at 6 p.m. because we're going to start at 6 p.m. whether everyone's there or not. So I need to be there because I need to do my part. And not only that, but Johnny, who showed up late every week, will start to get the picture, hey, they're not going to wait around for me. They are going to do what they said they're going to do every single time they said they're going to do it. So I need to be there when they said it was going to start. Now, that's just a small example, but that idea infiltrates really all aspects of your ministry. And I'm sure there are a million other different examples that I could cite, but I'm going to move on to get to the other tips. So on to tip number two, and that is that you must give your team a week off. Give the people of your team a week off. It doesn't have to be your entire team all on one Sunday, although I think that could work. We'll talk about that here in a minute. But you've got to give your team a week off because people cannot serve for 52 weeks in the year. Well, they can serve for 52 weeks in a year, but they won't last forever if you make them serve 52 weeks out of the year every single year. So you can have them serve for a year and then get burnout, or you can encourage them and recommend that they take at least, I would recommend at least four Sundays off every single year for your team. So that works out to like one a quarter. Every three months, they'll have a week off. And I understand that this is very difficult in a small church because I lead in a small church. My church is under 100 people. And so we don't have a huge worship team. We don't have multiple people to fill all of the spots in our worship team. So what's that mean? That means that some Sundays we're without a bass player. Some Sundays we're without a drummer. But you know what? It's important for them to take Sundays off so that they can continue to serve uh, for a long time and not just for one year and then burn out. So even if it means sacrificing some like you don't have some sort of instrument on your team for a week i feel like that's okay because we're not just focused on that one service we're focused on the person's spiritual well-being who gets to take a sunday off and so back to that original idea of giving your entire team a week off think about what that would look like in your ministry what if you have you know you have maybe another singer bass player drummer whatever what if you gave them all one week off all together and you just led with an acoustic guitar then it wouldn't be like okay this is you know one person's gone it's like we're gonna do something different this sunday and we're gonna have an acoustic time of worship and then your whole team gets a time off your church gets something that's a little bit different on a sunday and it doesn't feel like okay well somebody's missing here it just feels like we're tr- trying something different so give your team a week off on to tip number three make it more about more than just about playing music your team well i always call it a team and not a band because there's bands inside the church there's bands outside of the church but we know that it's much more than just about playing music so you've got to build a team environment you've got to make it where we are working together we aren't just showing up and we have our parts learned although we do want to have our parts learned but we don't just show up at a rehearsal and run through the songs and say okay that's good and go home we want a relational element because that deepens the Uh, relationship of the team that strengthens the team and then also we're not just playing music but we're leading worship 
and something that I try to communicate to the people of my team, and you should be communicating to your team as well, is that we are all worship leaders. Even if you are the auxiliary percussion player and you're over there with a shaker in the background and the light, the stage lights don't even hit you, you're still a worship leader. We are all leading worship because we are leading our church in worship. We aren't just in charge of the musical part. We are worship leaders. And that's a really important understanding for your team because it's not just about playing music. It's about a lot more than that. Tip number four. Do not waste your worship team's time. You must always have a plan for what you're doing because this goes back to building trust. If you don't have a plan, your worship team is not going to trust you. And I'll go back to worship rehearsals again for this example because what happens a lot is maybe your worship team doesn't show up prepared to rehearsal. They don't know your parts. And so they kind of stand around and figure out their parts as you go along and you're like why are they doing this and oftentimes it's because you don't have a plan for your worship team and that even starts before worship rehearsal because you've got to ask yourself the question have i properly equipped these people to learn their parts before they came to rehearsal or have i just sent out the song list the day before we had rehearsal which I mean, I've been there, honestly. You send the songs out, and you don't really give people time to prepare. And what happens is you've been thinking about these songs maybe for a while, and so you're prepared, but you've just told them the day before. So you got to get people things in advance. That's part of the plan. But then whenever you get to rehearsal, you have to have a plan as well. Because if they see you wandering around, and you don't really know what you're doing, and you're trying to figure things out in the moment, then you're wasting their time and they aren't going to show up prepared because they're like, okay, well, apparently they're setting the example. The worship leader is setting the example for the team and they're just kind of figuring things out in the moment so I can figure things out in the moment as well. And then nobody's prepared and you're wasting people's time. So don't waste people's time. And that goes back to just starting rehearsal on time as well you know those people who showed up at 6 and Johnny didn't show up at 6 15 so you waited around for him to show up you've wasted 15 minutes for them so don't waste people's time and finally number five and this is a question that you can ask your team that will help you lead them better the question that you should ask your team is how can I serve you better Maybe at a worship rehearsal, you sit down with them and you're talking to them before you go on stage to run through the songs and just ask them the question, how can I serve you better? What can I do to make your job, your role in the worship team easier? And what that does is that allows people to share those things that they've been thinking about. Like you're giving them permission to say, you know what? I could really use the song list like a day earlier. You know, we have rehearsal on Thursday and you send it out on Tuesday and I don't really have time to run through songs between those. So if you could just get it on Monday, it would be better. And what you're doing, like they would probably never come up to you and just say that on their own. But whenever you ask that question, how can I serve you better? How can I lead you better? It opens up the door for that sort of conversation to happen. So next time at your worship rehearsal, if you're in charge of your worship team, I encourage you to just ask the question, how can I serve you better? What can I do to make your job, your role on the worship team easier? And I think you'll be amazed at some of the answers that you get. And then whenever you actually implement those into your leading, it's going to take your worship team and leadership to the next level. Hey, before you go, I want to share with you a free training that I put together. It's an audio training. It's called Five Tips to Instantly Improve Your Worship Leading. And in this audio training, I share five tips that if you're just aware of them and conscious of them and make the effort to actually implement them into your worship team leader leading, you'll improve your worship leading. They're pretty simple. You just got to know them and make the decision to do them. So head over to leadingworshipwell.com or just click the link in the description below. You'll find it down there. Five tips to instantly improve your worship leading. Thanks so much for joining me today. 
Once again, my name is Spencer Cormany from leadingworshipwell.com. Go follow me on Instagram or Facebook at Leading Worship Well. I'd love to connect with you there, and I'll catch you in the next one. Keep leading worship well, guys. See ya.